Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about cell differentiation. We're going to talk about exactly what that means and how it happens. We're going to talk about how this leads to the formation of specialized tissues and how these tissues are able to interact with each other to get what we call emergent properties. Okay, so let's just talk about what exactly that means. So, as you probably know, within the human body or within the, the body of loads of different animals, we have regions or tissues that are specialized for certain functions, right? And so in order to get these regions or tissues that are specialized, we need to get cells that are specialized, right? So for example, we know that there, there's a cells in our brain uh, and our spinal cord that we call neurons, right? And, and neurons look something like this, whereas maybe the cells that make up skeletal muscle, right? The striated muscle fiber we talked about in, in the first video, that's a striated muscle fiber, that's really long, and, and that obviously looks super different from how a neuron looks, right? But the thing that's a little bit confusing is that if you were to look at the DNA, so the genetic material, of both these cell types. And remember that DNA and genetics, that's kind of what determines how a cell behaves, right? So if you were to take all the genetic material, which is what we call the genome, okay, the genome, which I've written down here as well, um, all the genetic material inside both of these cells is the exact same, okay? We have the same exact genes in the same exact order. It's all the same. So the question is, how exactly does this cell decide to become look like that and how does this cell decide to look like that okay and it's by this process known as cell differentiation okay and it happens in development so that's as we are developing um from from a, an, a small ball of cells into a fully functioning human or animal what has to happen is this process known as cell differentiation and it's it's really important to understand what this is okay essentially since we all the cells have the same genome Self differentiation is the process of switching on or activating some genes, but inactivating others. Okay, so we're not deleting them, we're not removing them, we're just uh, turning on some parts of the genome and turning off other parts. So if I were to take the entire genome, right, let's just imagine that this is an entire genome of, of one cell, in one cell, we might activate this region, and that might lead to the formation of a neuronal cell, right? Whereas in another cell, rather than switching on that part of the genome, it switches on this part. And so then you get this strided muscle fiber. So by switching on some genes and switching off others, you get what, uh, the differentiation into different types of specialized cells. Okay. Now the cells that are able to do this, that are able to differentiate into different pathways, okay, and we'll talk about these more in the next video, but these are known as stem cells, okay? So that kind of makes sense, right? There's a stem, and then these are branches off of that original cell, okay? So they have the ability to switch on certain genes, switch off other genes, and then differentiate along different pathways, okay? But more about that in, in the next video, okay? Just for now, understand what cell differentiation is. Fine, and then now let's just discuss what this allows for us to do. Because since we have all of these different cells that are, that are unique and that are specialized, these cells are able to act together to perform functions that none of them could do individually, okay? So let's take the example of the digestive system, right? In order for, for, for the human to, to take in, let's say, a burger, so this is supposed to be a burger, I'll give it a bun as well, okay? A lettuce burger. Um, in order for the human to take in this burger, to break it down into all of its different parts, and then to absorb it and then survive off of that, right? That's a really complicated process. And the idea about emergent properties is that there's no individual cell that can perform digestion, okay? There, there's not one, one cell that can do all of the different things we need to do to actually break down this burger and absorb it, okay? What we need is for multiple different types of cells to come together to form what we call a tissue, right? And for these tissues to then act together to form organs, okay? So what we get is, 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 is properties that by, through the interaction of these specialized cells, we get these properties that are unique to the tissue. So none of the individual cells were able to perform these functions, okay? And this is what we call emergent properties. So it's that the sum of its parts, so the sum of something's parts is greater than the whole. I think Aristotle said this, is greater than the whole, okay? 
you can kind of think of it as a car as well, right? The engine on its own will not be able to get someone from France to Germany, right? We need the tires, we need the, the engine, we need the, 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 the hull of the, of the car itself, right? We need all the different parts to act together to create this, this overarching function. And this is what we call emergent properties, so new properties that happen through interactions. So the key points to take from this video is that all cells in the body share the exact same genome, which is all the genetic material, and that in order to create specialized cells, we need to undergo a process known as differentiation, which involves switching on some genes and switching off others, and that results in what we call emergent properties. So I hope that made sense.